Hey, everybody packed in. Let, let me proper introduce our guests, okay? So this is Alex Hermosi from Gym Launch. Okay, so listen to me, guys. This is the all-time biggest internet marketer for fit, fitness there ever was. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen in just a second here. And um, you guys have heard me say this. My One of my all-time favorite entrepreneurs is Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels. Russell Brunson calls Alex Hermosi the best sales guy that he knows. He said it to you one time on a, on a, um, a vlog. Okay, so this is a, a big dude. I just said this not too long ago. I ran into a situation being uh, six months ago. I was feeling a little caved in. Somebody said some stuff, a couple of some, some, some stuff. I'm like, yo, right. Alex, I'm facing this dude. What are your, what, you know, like, what's your opinion? And you basically told me what I kind of knew, which was like, dude, it don't matter what people say about you. It matters what you say about you. Mm. And if there's a little bit of truth to what they're saying, that's when it hurts. So if you know like what you're doing, what you stand for, none of that shit matters. And dude, I snapped out of it. Okay. So you guys know, you know, some of the stuff I've been able to achieve. Oh yeah. This is a guy that I'm like, dude, this is like a, a big bro. This guy right here is the real deal. And, and he's here today. He had a surgery and he's like, Mike, whatever I can do to, you know, support the community, drop some gems, inspire. Like I'm here. I got a presentation. If not, I'm going to share my story, whatever you need. I'm here. So, um, Alex Hermosi from Gym Launch. These are $25 million plaques. The one behind oh, let me give you the updated dollars. one. Let me give you the updated one, bro. I got, I got all four. I got all four. I got all four, bro. $100 million. Fourth one. There this you is go. the Michael Jackson. Usually they say the Michael Jordan, but these are like plaques. This is the <laughs> Michael Jackson of internet marketing, guys. Big freaking deal. So, Alex from Gym Launch, bro. Welcome, man. Good to see you. You kind of jam. Either way. Um, Alex Becker, who's the, who's the founder of that, uh, clued me in recently to something. He's like, dude, your, your, your ROAS is insane. Cause he can see everyone's revenue and their ad spend. And I was like, Oh, what do you mean? He's like, you have the highest return on ad spend of everyone in the entire platform by like a mile. And I didn't really ever think about it, but our lifetime return on advertising is 36 to one. So to do over, you know, hundred and now, you know, five or 10 million, whatever we're at now, um, we've spent just under $3 million in advertising. And so there's a lot of other pieces to, you know, making more, but just for everyone on this call, we're talking specifically about sales, correct? Yes. Yeah. So, so Alex, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, 99% of these guys are, are closers and Sweet. they're getting closing positions. A couple of people are starting like a closer agency where they partner up with a guy like you. And they're like, Hey, let's do like a little JV deal. I slam your deals. Okay. Sweet. Well then, why don't I, so what I'm going to do is, because I do have a presentation, um, which is just how I think about sales. Um, and I have the, the third part of the presentation about scaling sales teams. Does anyone here have multiple closers who work for them? Or is, is most people just closing on your own right now? Uh, uh, you guys got to talk with Alex. You don't bite. Uh, I also can't see, I can't see the chat. I can't see the chat either. Oh. We're working towards that, Alex. Okay, so how about this? I'll give you the things that, so um, Russell, when I first met him was like, dude, how did you learn how to sell so well? And it was because I looked at my CRM and I'd done 4,000 sales one-on-one -on -one, uh, in fitness. And so that's a lot of reps. You know, I was taking 20 consults a day for like four years. And so that's in-person, face-to-face. My team would double or triple book me every 30 minutes. And I just sold the same thing over and over again. And because I was really good at sales, I ended up not hiring a ton of salespeople and I would actually have my managers set appointments for me all at one location. So I had six gyms. And so I would go there, they'd stack up an entire day. I'd mow down a whole day, go to a different gym and they'd been stacking all the appointments and I'd mow down. And so usually I'd do 20 to 25 consults a day. And you just get, you, you know, you just get these reps in of reading people, gauging tonality and seeing where you need to lean in and where you need to lean back. And so, um, you know, over time, I've then started training salespeople and sales managers. I had a remote sales team. We'd fly, we'd fly out and do turnarounds, um, like in person. So I had eight guys. We'd fly out to eight facilities every month, and we'd turn these facilities around because I know, Mike, you were in the fitness world before this. Um, That's right. And then I brought that sales team in-house, and they started doing phone sales for high ticket. So I've had, um, I've had in-person, phone, high ticket, low ticket. We've kind of done a lot of those things. I trained mortgage leads teams. Um, so kind of the whole gambit. And there's definitely some things that I've seen, you know, I've brought every sales product on the market. I bought grant stuff, but Balford stuff. Um, and I think there's a lot of merit and there's a lot of good stuff out there, but in my experience, uh, simplicity is what scales. 
And so I'll give you, if you're okay with it, I'll give you the few things that I have implemented consistently within my companies that have generated outsized returns. Is that cool? All right. That's awesome. So what I'm going to do, yep. let's yeah. rock and roll. Let's get this All thing. right. <laughs> Full jam. So as I said, simplicity, right? I'm uh, the, the world's best graphic designer, uh, as you can see here. So I'm trying to uh, show the, the real keys of the kingdom. So everybody here, is everybody here selling expensive stuff? Is that most people on this call? Yes. Every, everything's yeah. high ticket, Alex. Fantastic. All right. Can everyone still see me? And the screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, rock and roll. All right, so I'm guessing this guy, this isn't your first rodeo. Um, not your first presentation with a sexy headline or a big promise. And so if you have failed for you guys to uh, grow your thing in the past, I promise you it's not your fault. Lots of information, very confusing. Um, and you can sometimes be inundated with lots of different salespeople's information. You've got Mike here, who's a, who's a gem and knows his shit and you guys are lucky to have him. Um, but in, hopefully in this presentation, I will uh, put some of those fears to rest of like, what if, I'm never, what if I never make it? What if I never turn this corner um, and become the salesperson I want? What if I never hit the 100, 100 grand a year? What if I never hit the 100 grand a month? Or what if I they don't hit the million a month goal that I have? And then what does that, what does that mean about me, right? If you've ever thought those things, um, like I can tell you, I did too. Um, right after the instance that I had uh, Mike with that individual, um, and that individual drained my entire bank account and then sent it to their girlfriend in Sweden and then filed bankruptcy. After that happened, I had $1,200 because I had sold all my gyms and put my money into that account. So I started at zero, which I'm very grateful for because it gave me the experience that I have now. And so what I'm going to show you is that you can have a simple sales process that can yield outsized returns. A lot of people like to make this fancy because it makes it easier to sell stuff to people about selling. But these are the things that I have seen that have unlocked the growth for us because I don't think I'm the best marketer out there. I think we've simply attached a phone to a funnel um, and we've been very efficient at it. And so as a result of that, I've always been able to make more per customer than anyone else because of how efficient we are at the conversion process. All right. And so that's what we're here for. So I want to show you exactly step by step our process for selling. All right. And so there should be uh, two types of people here. Some of you guys who are under $100,000 a month, and I'll show you how to never compete on price again. All right. And if you guys are over $100,000 a month, I'll show you exactly what we did to scale a team to get to a million a month and beyond. Is that cool? Because yeah. if you're under 100, it's just you, right? If you're over 100, you need people, all right? So it's going to kind of be like the actual selling itself and then the scaling of the sales, all right? So that's kind of the goal for the 60 minutes. I'll probably be able to get it done in 40-ish. I'll talk fast so we can have some time, all right? Everyone can just listen fast. Is that all right? All yeah, right, I'm going to go fast. Yeah, <laughs> got it. So, so I've been really fortunate. Um, yeah, now we're at 105 or 110 or whatever it is um, in, in selling stuff, which has been cool. What's been cooler is we've been able to donate to causes. You guys don't know my story, but um, I, had a, I had a gym teacher after school who stayed with me. He didn't have to. He didn't know me from anybody. And he worked out with me for an entire year and taught me how to work out because I was like a really insecure kid. And as a result of that, I got into fitness. And so I feel like it's all of our opportunity because a lot of you guys are on here like, we're already in the top 1% in the world. You know what I mean? Like we're bitching about not making a hundred grand a month. Like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like really. And so um, it's been a great privilege to be able to give back. And we've donated 1.4 million just in the last three years, actually 1.7 now I have to update that. Um, but anyways, just to causes that we, that we care about. And so for us, it's, it's kids being able to have the opportunity that we had. All right. And uh, if you guys are in the fitness industry, Arnold was my hero is the reason I quit my job. Um, and I've been able to, you know, grow a friendship with him, which has been awesome. Um, and we've had, you know, over a thousand clients hit a hundred thousand dollars a year using the sales framework. I'm going to show you. All right. So like, you can imagine that these people are not maybe as good as you are. You can imagine that somebody in that thousand is probably not as naturally talented. Right. So the process works. Okay. And we've got a lot of people over seven figures now. Um, but it wasn't that way. Right. So this is me. When I started my first gym, I slept on the floor. I had $5,000 total. My rent was $5,000. Um, and so I had one month that I had to learn how to make money. And uh, I built a funnel because I learned this from the internet. And I was actually, I sent this picture to my dad because I was so excited. I was so proud of this picture because I sold that many people in the first, in the first two weeks uh, <laughs> for free. <laughs> um, and things started to grow, right? I had my, that was my, one of my gyms. I had nine employees. I felt like a badass. You know, my dad finally told me he thought I, you know, wasn't a schmuck for, you know, being an idiot and getting into fitness. So I thought I felt like I was figuring things out. And then all of a sudden, Facebook slap happened. This is years ago, and there's been many slaps. Facebook just kind of kind of has its, its, its bitch hand proverbially swinging back and forth. But, um, you know, we got slapped, and overnight, my, my lead cost went up 5x, right? And so my, my money-making my money rain turned into a desert. 
and the thing was my marketing was losing money every day. And all I could think about was letting my dad down and more realistically having my dad be right. I'm going to, I'm going to, all right, cool. Um, and so the question that I asked myself was like, how can I afford to get more leads? Right. And so I called my friends up and he had a, he was a brick and mortar uh, gym owner. And he told me that things were going great for him. And I was like, what the hell, dude, what are you, what are you doing? And he was like, dude, we just, we just attached a phone to the funnel. And I was like, no shit. He's like, we're selling expensive stuff on the front end now, instead of selling trials. And I was like, well, that's cool. I'll do that. And so we went from losing two and a half, two to one to making 10 to one return on the front end, right? And what that meant for my business is I went from being able to break even at $10 a lead to be able to spend up a hundred, hundred dollars a lead and still make money, which is crazy, right? And so then things started to grow again for me. And then we, you know, open location after location and things grow. And I met this guy and uh, I was, I was, I met, I joined his mastermind. And I was trying to, I told him I wanted to create a nationwide gym, gym chain. And he said, uh, you should teach other people how you do what you do and not grow that chain. And I was like, well, you make more money than me. So, okay, I'll listen. And so then I started making, um, our, doing our marketing system, Mike, this is by the way, at that guy's gym, um, know, at 191 right? signups in 19 days. And that was the stack of contracts. Um, some of you guys may have seen this. It was like the most run ad for like a year and a half. Um, but we did a hundred thousand dollars in 19 days in sales, like in the ghetto. All right. So these are the three frameworks. Sorry. I sped through that. Cause we had already covered a little bit of my story early. So I wanted to get through it. Um, and these are the free frameworks that I kind of discovered um, to scale high ticket, all right? And it'll take, if, you, if, you're, if you're partnering someone, with someone, then it'll help take their losing funnels and turn them into, into cash machines. And I mean that genuinely, all right? So the free, three frameworks that I do is one is the closure framework, all right? These are the questions that get prospects to say yes, all right? And so adding this to any kind of, any funnel process is gonna instantly make it more profitable, all right? And I'm gonna walk through the questions that we ask and specifically what only three things that you can say on a sales call, period. It's the number one mistake that all the sales guys that even my guys make, and I have to remind them of. All right. The second thing is the conviction framework. So anyone who believes can outperform a seasoned sales rep by simply learning to control their tone. All right. So some of you guys right now, can I get a hand? Um, I'm going to unshare my screen real quick. Can I get hands on the screen of who here is newer to this? Newer to high ticket sales. Okay, great. Perfect. Then this is for you. I'm going to show you how you can beat the best sales reps. All right. And this is how I never, ever hire seasoned closers. Just FYI. No, no, it's not like <laughs> we're going to trade trading sales people. So I don't, <laughs> um, but I'm going to show you how you can beat seasoned prep seasoned pros. All right? all right. Which if I can find my presentation, there we go. Um, by learning, control your tone. And the last one is scaling. So for all of you guys who are over hundred thousand dollars a month and need to scale a team, I'm going to show you how to duplicate the skill in other people. All right. Cause it's one level of the skill is learning to sell. Another level of the skill is teaching to sell and it's a more valuable skill. So if you can duplicate your skill in someone else, that is how you can make 10 times, a hundred times more money because it's no longer, you're no longer constrained by your time. All right. So let's rock and roll. Close your framework. So after pouring over like hundreds of scripts, like I mean it, hundreds of scripts, um, I realized that there was always like these minor differences in wording, but if I hit these kind of main milestones along the way, I ended up closing the sale, right? And the nice thing is that this process works for B2C and B2B. So I don't know what stuff you're selling, but it works for both. And it worked for $500 tickets as much as $100,000 tickets. The process is the same, all right? And the way I teach my sales teams and now thousands of clients is this acronym, right? And, th and like, even when I'm thinking through sales calls, we use, we're like closer, C, right? L. So the C is clarify why the person is on the phone with you, all right? That's the objective. Why are you here? Why'd you take the time to take the call? What's the problem, right? What are we trying to solve here? After that, they were like, got it. So what I'm hearing is you're struggling with this. Does that sound about right? I'm going to label you with a problem. After that, we overview their past pain. So it's like, okay, so you have this problem. I can't be the first person you've talked to about this. Tell me a little bit about what you've done so far to try and, try and get past this, right? Tell me more about that. How'd that work out for you? Okay, understood. After that, it's like, okay, so I'm hearing all these things. This is why you're here. This is what you're trying to get. This is what you've tried and has it worked. Okay, well, can I tell you about how I think we might be able to solve your problem? This is where we sell the vacation, right? And then finally, or step before finally, we explain away their concerns. So this is where we tell them about the program and they were like, do you want to do it? They say yes or no. If they say no, then we explain away their concerns. So they say yes. And then once they say yes, we reinforce the decision. And this last R here is a point that I added years later because we realized that the sale, the sale just continues throughout the entire customer relationship, right? And so for you guys, if you're dealing with clients, 
uh, who you're selling for, you have to also sell them on continuously selling, right? You might have closed the card or closed the first payment, but their onboarding experience, they got to close them again. And then after that, when they have their first week check-in call, they got to get closed again because we have to consistently sell them on why they should do anything. Why should they not just watch Netflix? Why should they, why should they take action? Why should they have the discomfort of getting you know, smacked on the phone by a stranger, right? Why should they, why should they feel the, the sting of failure? We have to sell them consistently to help them overcome their pains, right? And so I'll show you some of these more closely. So clarifying why they're there, right? It's like, what made you come in today? What made you reach out? What's your goal right now? Why is that important to you, right? Okay, helping me understand what, what, do you, what are we doing here, right? This is one where someone in the beginning, like you have to hit this because if someone says like, you know, I just wanted to find out more information. You're like, cool, but why? Like, what did you want the information to solve? What was the, like, I'm sure you don't just go around collecting information all day, right? Like there's something you're trying to get out of this. What's the problem? And then they, and then you get what you need. You're like, got it. Okay. So just so I'm hearing you right, it sounds like this is your goal, correct? Then they acknowledge they have a problem. This is important because they have to say it. They have to own it. I can't cure cancer until you admit that you have it, right? We got to give it to you before we can cure it. After that, we overview the past, right? So it's like, what have you tried so far to accomplish this? How long did you do it for? How long ago? How did that work for you? What else have you tried? We call this the pain cycle, right? We consistently do this over and over again until we've exhausted all options, right? At that point, we have tons of ammo that we can use later in the close, which I'm sure you're aware of, right? And the big piece here is we explain how it's not their fault because if they had this missing piece or two of the equation, they were halfway there. They were three quarters of the way there. They were just missing this one piece, which we're going to provide for them. Right. And the nice thing is, is for most of you, hopefully you're selling a, a, a holistic solution. Right. So, for example, I'm going to use a fitness example because Mike's from from that background, too. If someone came in and said they tried workouts in the past, I'd be like, I'm not telling you don't that you don't need to work out. It's great. But you also need the nutrition, and the accountability. Right. You need nutrition to make sure they stop eating shit, because if you just start working out and eating donuts, it's not going to work. Right. Of course. Now, if I make you the best plan in the world, but you don't follow, it's not going to work either. That's why you need the accountability. And that's what I'm here for. And so from that point, that's kind of how you can naturally transition. So it's like, I'm hearing these things. This is what you're missing. Well, do you want to hear how the program works? Because I think we might be able to solve that for you. They'll say yes. All right. So what we've seen is that there's three things that make clients successful, right? And at this point, this is my belief is that three things has been, you know, unequivocal in most pitches is that I think it's human brain is that you can't take more than three. But typically it's like three pillars to the, to the stool or three, you know, finish your accountability. If I was selling leads, I'd want them to be, you know, timely, uh, you know, qualified and, you know, uh, exclusive, right? So there'll be three elements to make with a, what makes a good lead, right? There's, there's always three that you can usually find when you're selling a solution. And most times, not most times, every time, if you're on the phone with the prospect, you always have the upper hand because they have admitted at the beginning of this phone call that they have a problem. They have not solved it. And so inherently, they're going to be missing one of the keys. They cannot have them all or they would not be on the phone. So you, have a, you, you, you are in, a, in an unlosable situation unless you choose to lose it, right? Unless you choose to lose the frame. And so in this instance, it has been my experience that we use stories, short anecdotal stories, to, to, to break the belief of the prospect around a topic. What's important here is that we don't get into uh, jargon, right? We don't get into techno babble and talking about, the program and the modules and the, the things they're going to do, because all of that sounds like work. And that's not what they're there for. They're there for a result, right? And so instead, I would say something like with the fitness nutrition accountability, like I said earlier. So if I was trying to explain accountability, I'd be like, listen, you don't have accountability. When you were a kid, you ever like have your parents tell you to brush your teeth? They were like, yeah. I'm like, you know, how you're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. And they would tell you, oh, no, you got to go brush your teeth. And you, and you go and you brush your teeth and you sulk back to bed. And next night you do the same thing. They'd say brush your teeth. You go brush your teeth, go back to bed. But you're an adult now, right? You brush your teeth. And they're like, yeah. And that's because you had external accountability that turned into an internal habit, right? And that's what we're going to do for you here, right? So I didn't tell them about fucking the coaching call that they're going to have and the posts that they're going to have and the blah, blah, blah. What we told them is the result of that. We gave them an anecdotal story that made sense to them. Or that's probably a really key point I just want to drive home here is that when you have your pitch part, it shouldn't be longer than three minutes, like tops, because no one really gives a shit. And at the end of the day, the reason they're going to buy is going to be because of how understood they feel. So how much, when you went through that overview of the pain, you were able to restate back to them accurately exactly how they felt and the struggles they are experiencing, which is why you need to shut the fuck up when they're talking. Right.
And so there's only three things that are ever said on a sales call. Do you guys know what they are? There's only three things that ever come out of your mouth. Questions, restatements, and anecdotal stories, which is the story that I just referenced. The three stories that you will use to break a belief. That's it. So this, so that's how you sell them the vacations. You have these little sound bites, right? I'll give you another example. So if I was doing, um, if I was doing food, right? I'm like, listen, uh, three parts of the program, finish your accountability. So nutrition wise, you've got to eat stuff that's going to make you lose weight. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay, cool. But the problem is you don't want to do that, right? That's why we're here, right? Right. Okay. So let me ask you a question. When, uh, do you feel like, what's your favorite TV show? They're going to be like, uh, whatever, Game of Thrones. You're like, okay, Game of Thrones. Do you feel like you need to get like motivated to watch Game of Thrones? You're like, man, I was trying to watch it tonight, but I just couldn't, you know, I just, I just, I got really busy and I just couldn't sit down on the couch and turn the TV on. I couldn't do it. Right. Of course not. Because you look forward to it because you wanted to do it. And the key that we're going to do here is we're going to get you to look forward to the foods that you're eating. Because if you look forward to it, you don't need to be motivated because you do it on your own because you like it. Does that make sense? Great. Right. So what I didn't talk about the macros and the carb cycling and the intermittent fasting and the calorie counting and the blah, 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 blah. Because at the end of the day, that does not matter. What they want is for them to solve the problem and have it be pain free. Right. And that's what we're explaining to them. So that's selling the vacation, right? And this is a saying that I've used for a long time, which is sell the vacation, not the plane fright, right? And so this is what everyone else talks about. They're like, sir, for us to get you these results, you're going to have to take your pants off. You're going to have to jump through this loop. You're going to have to go through the TSA, the airport lines, pack your suitcases, take your shoes off, do the layovers, connect your flights, uh, have a person farting next to you. Don't worry. They don't have COVID. You'll have turbulence probably on the plane. Then as soon as you're out, you think you're done, but you still have to wait a baggage claim. They probably lost your bag right? And in our world, it's your modules, your meal plan, your macros, your workouts, your support team, your URLs, your domains, your funnels, your targeting, your ads, and the other shit that doesn't matter, right? But instead, what they want is you sell Maui, final destination. And you always sell the same thing because the difference is only the level of service and how they want to get there, right? If you have multiple levels of service. So do they want to swim to Maui to where they're trying to go? There's sharks and you could drown or get robbed, right? Like this chick, crazy. Uh, do they want to take a boat to Maui? It'll take a little longer, but there's no shark attacks, but there's still no Wi-Fi and you're kind of, you know, in the sun. Uh, do you want to take a normal flight to Maui? Get there a little faster. Still smells bad, has security, bad food, but you're going to get there. Or do you want to take a private jet to Maui, right? Direct, nonstop, champagne on the plane, suitcases packed when you arrive, right? And so that's the selling piece. E is explaining away their concerns. And so these are the questions that sound like, um, so there's, I'm sure Mike has already taught you a lot of the, uh, the obstacle overcome concepts, right? So fundamentally, there's, there's three big ones, right? Price. And rather than teach you like the, uh, the, the, the drilling of the obstacles, I told you there's two things you need to memorize. One of them are the stories. The second are the obstacle overcomes, right? Because those are the things that you're in the red zone. Like that's not where you start thinking about what you're going to say, all right? So the two things that you need to memorize as a salesperson are the stories about what you sell and the obstacles that you're going to encounter when you're in the red zone. The questions on the front end, you need to know the milestones you need to hit in order to move forward. And this is one of the big mistakes I'm sure Mike talks about a lot, which is you need to sit in the pain. If someone does not clarify why they need a solution, you do not ask for the sale. If, they're, if we just say, hey, you know, why, what brought you to here today? I just want to find out more information. Okay, cool. So, you know, let me tell you about the program. Like, that's not, we didn't get the fucking, like, we don't know why they're there. We don't know what their goals are. Like, one of the things that drives me nuts about my team sometimes is I'm like, Dude, we're eight minutes in the conversation. I was like, I don't know how many clients they have. I don't know what their revenue is. I don't know what their profit is. I don't know what their biggest pain and struggle was right now. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, you just told them. They're like, oh, Jim Launch is a $100 million company. I'm like, they don't give a shit. But they do. My sales guys, because they get their egos puffed up. Right? But it has nothing to do with the prospect. They do not care. Right? They only care about them. So, that's right? right? Yeah. And that's, and that's the, the yeah. issue. Right? Everyone talks way too much about the product. And so when you're training salespeople, you don't train them on the product. You train them on the prospect. Mm. The product doesn't matter. I mean, it matters obviously from like how you're going to make money because you have to do a good job because I'm going to get that in the second point. But in terms of when you are selling and training someone, if you guys know someone or know a spe specific niche really well, then you will know their pains. And if you have a new salesperson, you hear them say shit and you're like, that's not what he thinks. What is he doing? He might know the product perfectly. But he just said that the guy's problem was not the problem. 
And so then it doesn't matter what the product is because he doesn't feel like it's for him, even though it's totally for him, but you just misarticulated the problem. That's where the clarity has to happen. If you nail that, the rest of the pitch is easy, all right? And so the key here is relying on past agreements that have already been made. So this person with their partner, with their spouse, with their business, you know, whatever, has our, that person knows that there's a problem and they also don't approve of that problem. And so why would they be in any way against remedying a problem that they already don't approve of, right? And then finally, we always tack on, sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? Ha, ha, ha. Depends on the ticket sale, right? But you can get those in, right? And then obviously, last, last case here is you just do a delayed close and say, let's get your card down. We can put a down payment. We can pay the rest on Friday. And if between now and then, you know, your partner comes back and says, no, man, I want to be poor. I want to keep struggling. And like, I want to never make money and like continue to do this for the rest of our lives. And I'll absolutely tear up the contract. Don't worry about it, right? Finally, you've got stalls, right? I need to think about it. So these are because people don't, people are afraid of making mistakes, right? People are afraid of making mistakes. And because of that, they don't like making decisions because it's easier to let life make the decision for you. And so they like doing it that way because then they feel like it's not their fault, right? And so, I mean, a great obstacle over for this is what's your main concern, which is usually my number one thing I go to when someone's like, I need to think about it. It's like, totally, what's your main concern, right? Let's think about it together, right? And so fundamentally, these are the things that they need to know. Do you feel like what we're doing can meet your needs and solve the problem? Yes or no? Yes. Do you want to work with us as a company? Do you like our values? Do you like what we stand for? Do you believe what we believe about the world? Yes. Do you have access to funds or know someone who does? Yes. Well, then let's rock and roll because those are the only things we know to me that make the decision, right? Do you like the product? Do you like us? And do you have the money to do it? That's it. Simple as that. All right. And so when we walk through those, if you encounter these situations, obviously there's, you know, if you're going to do it now, sooner or later, you might as well, like there's plenty of things to say, but I think it's more important to understand the theory behind why someone has this objection, right? They have an objection around price because they don't see the value because you didn't articulate it. They have an objection around decision maker, usually because you fucked something up earlier in the sale, but at this point you're in the red zone, so you got to deal with it. So you rely on past agreements. If they come with a stall, then you help them confront a decision and make a logical choice and teach them how to make a decision that in that moment, you say, what are you most afraid of? happening. I'm afraid of you just, you're afraid of me taking the money, right? Just taking your money and you getting nothing, right? Again. Well, let me tell you how that's not going to happen, right? You can bring their concerns. All right. And then finally they say yes. And you're like, awesome. And this is where, if you're selling for someone else, get them to send a personalized video. Like, Hey, Johnny saw you just signed up with us today. Super pumped to have you. Uh, you're going to be meeting with Heather tomorrow. She's going to get you kicked off. Um, you should in the mail, get a special gift. So keep a lookout for that. And then, uh, you know, send a handwritten card. If someone just bought a really expensive thing, People are making their decision about whether they believe in you as a company within the first 48 hours after the sale. They make a decision of whether or not they're going to be with you in the long term and how they are treated in the first 48 hours after they give you money. <laughs> so it's critical. And it's usually in that point that people fuck up and just ignore them. Framework two. And, you know, Mike, I can stop. I'll just do framework two and then we can do the Q&A because if I don't have time to scale the sales teams, I can hit on the points later. Um, okay. So this is a big one for everyone who is who's newer to sales. All right. If you believe you can outperform a seasoned sales rep by learning to control your tone, all right? And so I reworked all of our scripts into the closer framework. And the thing is, is immediately some people were crushing it, right? While others were still not selling shit. And I was like, what the fuck, right? And so I talked to my friends and they were like, dude, you should read this book by Jordan Buffett. And the biggest thing that I got from the book was just, he was very specific about tonality. And that was a big shift for me in just learning to teach how to ask the question not just asking the question, right? And so in the book, he talks about having the same issue that I had with scaling sales. It's like, I give the script to two guys, some guy crushes, some guy doesn't. I'm like, what the fuck, right? And the thing is, is there's a hidden dialogue that the sales team does not know that they are talking in, right? And so the words are not going to be enough, all right? They're just literally 10%. So the words that you have, it might be the most tested script in the world. It's still only 10%. 90% is how you say the words, right? Because how you say what you say is tonality. Like right now I could give everyone here's, you know, Jerry Seinfeld stand-up script. You could read it. It wouldn't be funny, right? Because it's not just that you had the script, it's how you deliver it, right? And that takes time to develop, right? And that's kind of unconscious mastery. And so there's two ways to do this, all right, that I have found. 
You can either trick yourself into it or you can train yourself to do it, all right? And since we don't have enough time <laughs> to, uh, to train on the influence of tonalities, here's the trick that I teach, all right? Conviction will correct your tone. Conviction made real. So um, let me tell you this story. So I was, I was brought in to do a day of consulting for this mortgage leads company to train their sales team. And the first half of the day, I reworked the whole script. I put the closer framework, made it a question-based um, sale. And then I came in and they were expecting me to like rain, you know, fire and brimstone on these guys. And so I sat down and I was like, who's the guy you have the most trouble with? It was this guy, John. So I was like, John. And they were selling leads. I was like, John, how good are the leads? He was like, well, you know, and I was like, we're good. Thanks. And I was like, let me show you how you would answer it if you actually believed that the leads were good. I was like, you'd say like, dude, these leads are fucking unbelievable. Right now I'm studying for my real estate exam so I can get in on these leads. My aunt is a realtor and she has more business than she can handle. And I'm sending her traffic. I'm trying to get my, my, my brother to do it with me. I'm not sure how long I'm going to work here because these leads are killing it for us, right? If you believe in the product, you don't need to have all the sales skills. You'll do it the right way because you'll actually want to help the person. So that's why the most important part of the sale is the product. Because unless you're a malicious person, like most people here, was everyone here have some level of ethics on some level? Like no one here just wants to like take someone's last dollar? Right. So then the only way to sell hard, because if you're going to close, you got to sell hard. The only way to sell hard is to believe through and through balls to bones when you look at yourself in the mirror at night. And this is what I talked about when Mike said at the very beginning, like what happens when people start hating on you? The only way that I've been able to stay where we're at in the gym industry, Mike knows the amount of hate that I get, Right. The only way we've been able to do that is that I read the testimonials, the thousand of them that I have, of gyms who have gone to six figures, of the hundred gyms we've taken to seven figures, right? Like I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our product works. I also know that if you sign up for a gym, not everyone loses weight. And I'm willing to deal with that. I, I'm willing to give everyone the opportunity to change their life. So here's the tactics around this. Reread testimonials out loud daily in front of your sales team, all right? And if the business that you're working for doesn't have testimonials, find another business, all right? I'm serious. You're not going to be able to close unless you're like, literally, unless you're unethical, you're not going to be able to close. So go find something that is a good product because there's plenty of them out there, all right? Find a good product that you believe in and you see tons of testimonials and then read those every day in front of the team, all right? Second, well, this is for the business owners, but fix everything you possibly can about the product. All right, and never blame a customer for lack of success. So as much as there are people who have not been successful who've used Gym Launch, I still take the fact that they were not successful and I think, what could I have done that would have made the next person like them successful? And you plug the hole, right? If you do that over and over and over and over again, you know, truly at the end of the day, when you look at yourself in the mirror, when no one else is watching, whether or not you truly put the effort forth that merits the price that you are charging, right? And only you can know that. And the thing is, is like the reason salespeople get beat up is because they don't put the work in and then it grates on their soul. And then eventually they burn out. They burn out not because they can't handle no, but because they can't handle how they feel about themselves. Right? And so you have to put the work in to have the conviction because that's what's going to get you through it. If you've ever met someone who's a born again Christian, all right, they are convicted. They do not care how many people tell them to shove it because they are trying to save people's souls. It's real. Like if you let that hit you, it's real. You know what I mean? And if you can be a disciple of whatever the product that you have, an evangelist in the truest terms, then all the scripting stuff, it won't matter. Why are some of the best salespeople clients who had success? Because they believe in it. That's it. And the most convicted person will always win the fight right? They'll always lead the dance because they have conviction in their skepticism. You have conviction in your product and one of you is going to win out, right? And it's the question is whose belief is stronger? Because belief isn't binary. It's not, do I believe or do I not believe? It's how much do I believe? To what extent do I believe? Would I bet a thousand dollars on this product? Would I bet $10,000 on this product? Would I sell my mother this product? Think about it. If you would sell your mother this product, how convicted are you? Probably very and you will have no problem closing deals. And notice that I have a lower tone right now so that you listen to the words that I'm saying so that you think that they're important. In terms of uh, the training schedule, 60 minutes a day, five days a week, my guys do world-class sales training. They text me in the morning before they wake up. They text me once they're done. 
Uh, they do the first 25 minutes, they read the script out loud. Five minutes, they drill obstacles. I need to think about it. I need to talk to my partner. Um, this is expensive. And then they talk, they, they drill the second half, right? As a closer, you got to talk, you got to listen, you got to train both skills, all right? The talking's the tone and saying the words the right way in the right sequence without having to think about it. The listening is going over recording and figure out what went right, what went wrong, and what we're going to do next time. And saying it, drilling it as a team, marking it, and moving to the next one. That's the short answer. I appreciate that. And I love the conviction, by the way. I can tell that this isn't scripted or anything, and you're just going, like, your full heart out there. So. Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at, at Ramosi. My YouTube is Alex Ramosi. My podcast, if you just type in Alex Ramosi. I've got Go a book. Go show him some love. Show him some power. Yes, I mean, okay. If you guys want, I've got a book called Alex's, at alexsbook.com. Um, it has 35 pages of obstacle overcomes in the appendix for each one of those obstacles. If you guys want to go grab that, there's, I think there's a, there's a sales training in there for like a hundred bucks too. If you want to grab it, you can grab it. It's very good. Um, I do it because I know it's so good. People buy other shit. So it's worth the money. Mm. Hell yeah. Alex, thank you, bro. Appreciate thank it. You. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.